Uh, can I just uh, thank Sir Simon for, for those words? And um, i just start, really, by um, doing a, a, a specific thank you, really, to the GLA, the Mayor and the GLA family for all the support they've given us over the last few years uh, in, in various forms, uh, in terms of financial resources, uh, expertise, uh, and sometimes just uh, you know, real wise counsel uh, at key moments of, uh, of decision. And, um, and that really is a good starting point for me. Let me move this forward. There we go. Uh, because I want to start by absolutely um, uh, being firm about how Croydon sees itself as part of Greater London. Our relationship with the rest of London is entirely symbiotic. Many people travel out of our borough every day to work in other parts of London, Westminster, the city, uh, uh, Docklands, and, uh, and so on. And many people journey in uh, to work in Croydon uh, as well. We are absolutely economically linked uh, to the rest of London. We are its southern heart. And um, we recognize in Croydon that we can't do everything uh, by ourselves. We need uh, a strong relationship and a strong partnership uh, with uh, uh, the London Mayor. And that's one of the reasons why Croydon uh, is supporting uh, the Mayor's uh, uh, proposal uh, for a single London-wide LEP uh, for Greater London. Because actually, the boundaries, these, ward bound these uh, uh, borough boundaries that you see on this map, at the end of the day, they're absolutely artificial. Uh, London stands or falls uh, together in terms of our economic uh, prosperity. Honing in then on us locally, I'm not going to repeat all the things that Simon told you about the borough, but one of the ones that I want to pick out is our talent base. Croydon has a fantastic talent base. Uh, it, you can see it in our schools. Uh, we have uh, one of the, uh, the best uh, private education systems uh, in London in that we have some of the best private schools, particularly uh, through the Whitgift uh, Foundation, and we have uh, some fantastic state schools at primary and secondary level as well. Uh, last year, 80% of Croydon young people got at least 5A star to C uh, GCSE uh, at 16. Um, and if you think about our demography, that is pretty remarkable. But we have um, lots of families within Croydon who are very aspirational uh, for their young people and for themselves, uh, and, uh, and, and this wonderful, uh, diverse mix uh, of, uh, uh, of population and talent uh, within the borough. And that means we've got one of the largest FE colleges uh, in the country, uh, 15,000 students uh, uh, studying uh, at Croydon College, uh, and, uh, and we also have 1,000 uh, higher education students who are studying here in Croydon for Sussex University uh, degrees. And we want to expand that number very rapidly over the next few years. But Croydon is also unique. It is part of Greater London, but it is also unique. It is, in many ways, the only what is called edge city in the country. The nearest comparison is probably Stockport, but that's a, a lot smaller in terms of its relationship with the rest of Greater Manchester. Our comparators are the likes of Oakland and its relationship with San Francisco, Newark in its relationship uh, with the rest of New York, Gataf, St. Etienne. These are the places that Croydon uh, is really like. And we revel in our specialness uh, and, uh, and, 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 and like our uniqueness and what it brings us. Of course, it brings complexity, particularly in terms of our legacy and the development of the 1960s. And I always like this uh, picture because I think it sums up that complexity. So Richard Seifert uh, building, very famous modernist uh, architecture. And um, I've seen this building many times. And I I'm actually I don't think it's one of our best buildings personally. But look at that canopy. It's this extraordinary piece of uh, engineering uh, in, in, in concrete. And I think it summarizes, really, uh, the, the, the legacy that we have, that we've got to work out what's great about our legacy and keep it, but we've got to provide a context for it uh, in which our public realm uh, can really take shape and then other development uh, can uh, augment and even improve uh, some of that legacy that's worth, uh, worth keeping. It's also very important to understand where Croydon's come from um, because we're building on layers here. This was a medieval settlement, five archbishops of Canterbury uh, buried in our parish church. It was a thriving Tudor town, hence why we have the Whitgift Foundation. It had another period of significant prosperity when the railways arrived uh, and then uh, it was a very uh, uh, livable, uh, high quality of life town through into the 1930s, heavily targeted by the Luftwaffe uh, because of uh, um, the Croydon Airport and the fact that this is uh, 
you know, where our first line of defence for London was during the Second World War. Then clearly the ambition of the 1960s uh, as a back uh, uh, office in many ways for the financial services sector uh, in London. And then a period of decline uh, from really the beginning of the 1980s onwards where Croydon did miss two key economic cycles in terms of the chance uh, to renew itself. But now I think it has an opportunity really to connect to its past. Um, in terms of the future, moving to a much more flexible, mixed-use uh, environment where we allow different forms of development to stand cheek by jowl within our town centre. I think we can take the best of what we had pre-World War II in terms of this full of life, high quality of life, living environment within our town centre where homes, offices, retail, leisure stand, as I said before, cheek by jowl but also to link that to the ambition of the 1960s in terms of driving prosperity and commercial opportunity. But we have to be honest, previous plans over the last 20 years have not delivered. And we started again, really, in 2006. Uh, we commissioned the Allsop vision for the town centre to give us some sight lines in terms of what could be achieved. And then we have built, through the development of our core strategy, through our infrastructure planning, through our transport plan, uh, and then through individual master plans for different elements of our town centre, a fresh planning framework that combines certainty with flexibility for the development community. And let's face it, we're not short of land and opportunity uh, in Croydon. And we recognise that there is no way that the public sector can achieve this turnaround uh, by itself. This has to be primarily driven by the private sector. It is going to take private sector ambition and private sector investment to bring our town centre uh, fully uh, to its potential. So there we've got the, um, the Stanhope uh, Schroeder site next door. We've got the uh, Chroma site uh, just across uh, George Street. But there is plenty of space of other types as well. We have over-engineered over infrastructure from the 1960s. As we tame that infrastructure over the next few years and actually put our infrastructure plan and our transport plan to delivery, it will create further development sites and opportunities uh, in, uh, in different parts of our town centre. There's also the underground space as well. Croydon is a, a warren uh, of underground space. And that can be seen as a problem, but it can also be seen as an opportunity. In other parts of uh, uh, Greater London, where there are major constraints in terms of uh, providing parking, in Croydon we actually have the space and opportunity uh, to provide uh, uh, parking and other facilities, not least in terms of our energy uh, system, our decentralised energy system that we want to bring to the town centre. A, a mix of CHP and private wiring, uh, the work is already underway, uh, that will actually reduce energy costs significantly for any occupier uh, that comes into the town centre in the future. But that's the question, can Croydon be sexy? Um, well, my planning team are sexy, obviously, and uh, uh, here, here they are, uh, standing on a, uh, a, a windswept uh, uh, rooftop. Um, but there is an image about there is an image issue, and we know that, uh, that there is a, a brand um, uh, separation between how we perceive ourselves, those, those of us who live and work in Croydon and know the borough, and know all its richness and its diversity and in parts its beauty and its wealth uh, as well. There is a disconnect between us and the external perception. And I think in terms of uh, brand, um, it is uh, very, very complex. What we can't do is just um, tell a story that doesn't match our reality. But I do think we need to learn in Croydon how to represent our reality. And I think we need the help of the private sector in doing that, which is why I so much welcome this conference today and the fact that it is private sector led <laughs> and private sector driven. But if you take away the sort of the Primark signs on the right hand side, although Primark very important store, our most successful store last year in fact, but if, we, if you just ignore that for a moment, that could be any historic European town and urban domain really, with the tram disappearing into the distance and you're looking down you can see the tower of the parish church and the beauty of Old Town, Old Palace School and, and so on. And parts of Croydon are really special and what we've got to do is connect that all back together, in particularly in terms of our investment in public realm.